Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to give you guys some tips on how I breastfeed. Um, this is not going to be the traditional kind of breastfeeding. I'm going to give you some tips on how I use my Medela pump and style breast pump. Um, I do have a little co-host in here. He's wandering around. Can you say hi? Say hi guys. Just going to be playing with my toys and being good while mommy does her video. Okay? Okay. So I'm going to give you some tips on how I use my breast pump in order to feed my son breast milk. Things that you will need are a breast pump. I use the Medela pump and style breast pump. You have the option of getting it either in the like a purse like what I've got or you can also purchase it back in a backpack style um, so on the front it's got the little tubes that you'll connect to um, these little guys in here is also the outlet and there's a little knob in there that lets you go from um, low, medium to high, depending on how fast you want the suction. The other, the other thing that I keep in my breast pump is an extension cord, and the reason I keep this is because the outlet they provide you with is not long enough, and if you don't want to be two feet from the wall, I suggest you keep an, an extension cord in here as well. Something else I recommend using while you uh, use a pump is this kind of like a, sort of like a bra that you wear. That way you are hands free while you pump. I didn't have one of these probably the first two months of using this. So I had to use, or I had to hold these at, for 15 minutes every time I pumped. Now, if that's not annoying, I don't know what it is, but I highly recommend purchasing one of these, if not multiple bras. That way, you can just, that way you're not, you know, constantly holding the pumps, the, the things up. Um, now, if you're not comfortable with wearing a tube top kind of bra, my sister-in-law had her grandmother sew in uh, bra straps that way she didn't have to because she thought it was uncomfortable just to wear it like this I didn't get anything sewn on just because I didn't really feel the need to but I also recommend getting I also recommend getting this in a smaller size than you normally wear just because you do want it tight fitting because when these little suckers get full of breast milk they get heavy and it droops and the last thing you want is for it to droop down and get uncomfortable these are the um, Medela bottles I have a ton of these Medela bottles because when I was first pregnant with Mason and we went and looked at different bottles I bought a ton well, not a ton. I bought a few of each different bottle because I wasn't sure which bottles I would use, or I wasn't sure which bottles we would use with Mason. So not only do they work for feeding your baby, but they also count as storage. You can buy the tops, or they come with the tops. So you can just stick these in the fridge for later. Or if your child or baby likes to use these bottles, you can just put the nipple on top and feed them. Um, but I don't use these bottles to feed Mason. I use the Tommy Tippy brand. So these are the little guys that go on that you wear. If you're pumping, you're also going to need storage bags. These are the ones I have. I have the Target brand and the, I don't know how to pronounce this, but this is the purple box. There's no difference. They work the same. I just purchase whichever one is cheaper. Normally the Target brand is cheaper, but I think I had a coupon for these, so I picked them up because they were actually cheaper than the Target brand. But they work the same, and you are going to need this if you plan on pumping because you're going to have a lot of milk um, left over, and you're going to want to freeze those so you have them for later. 
And the last thing you're going to need is water. If you plan on breastfeeding, pumping, whatever, you are going to need to drink a lot of water. I would say I drink a bottle of water every hour. You want to keep yourself hydrated and you don't and you and you want to stay away from drinking anything with a lot of sugar or that has a lot of caffeine because anything you ingest your baby is going to consume so if you're drinking caffeine in order to stay up or have the energy to spend time with your little one your little one's going to have that caffeine in that breast milk also so be a good idea to stay away from caffeine all right so now i'm going to tell you how i use my breast pump um so when mason was first born for the first two weeks I only breastfed and I was breastfeeding him every two hours for 24 hours a day so that was extremely tiring it's especially after you give birth you're so exhausted and then your baby's waking up you know he's not sleeping through the night he's wanting to eat every two hours it's just it's just extremely tiring. I did a lot of research while I was pregnant on how to use them, the different positions to put your baby in to make it easier to, to breastfeed, but it was just difficult. I did have my um, breast pump as soon as I delivered Mason, but I wasn't using it for the first two weeks just because I didn't know how. Um, but then my husband, um, opened it up, read the book on how to use it. He learned how to use it and then showed me how. And two weeks after Mason was born is when I started to use it. And ever since, and I have been using it ever since then. So that first two weeks, what I would do is I would pump for 15 minutes every three hours. And then I would put one ounce in a bottle to feed Mason and he would drink one ounce every three hours. And at that time I was producing a lot of milk he sounds like Beavis, huh? But I was producing so much milk that I um, that I stored a lot. I I had oh my god, the whole freezer was just full of breast milk. So anybody who's thinking of doing this, that is the time that you save your that is the time that you save your breast milk. So when your when your baby is a newborn, that's going to be the easiest time because they sleep a lot. Mason slept so much, and so I just had plenty of time to pump. And at that time, I wasn't pumping at night. I only pumped during the day. And then I got up, you know, every two or two to three times to feed Mason in the middle of the night. I should have pumped at that time, but I really didn't. So as you go, you'll learn. So that's basically what I did while Mason was a newborn. At three months old, I was breastfeeding and pumping. Um, I, I wanted to make sure I kept my supply up, so what I would do is I would feed Mason, I would breastfeed Mason first, and he would feed for probably 20 to 30 minutes, both breasts, and then as soon as he was finished, I would get my pump out and then pump any remaining breast milk that I had. And that helped out um, because then I had leftover milk and my body thought Mason was consuming more milk so it produced more. So I also accumulated a, a lot of milk that way, so I had a, a large supply in my freezer. And by three months, I increased my time of pumping from 15 minutes to 20 minutes every three hours. And, um, and I increased Mason's milk intake also. I started feeding him three ounces every three hours. By the time Mason was six months old, I was still breastfeeding and pumping, but at this time I was only breastfeeding in the morning. Um, and that's because I, I don't know about, I don't know about any other mother, but you value your sleep. And I would, I would go the mile and say that I'm a lazy person because I do like to sleep late. Mason was starting to sleep later, meaning he would start waking up at around 9 or 10 but he would wake up at 6 a.m. because he was hungry so instead of coming to his nursery getting him out of bed walking to the kitchen warming up hot water just to warm up breast milk I decided to bring him into my bed and nurse him 
And I did that for months, probably maybe four months, just because it's easier and you catch up on your sleep and while you're sleeping, your baby's feeding. I would highly recommend breastfeeding in the morning if you can, because it's, because it just, you catch up on your sleep and your little one is eating. And at six months, not only was I pumping 20 minutes three times, or 20 minutes every three hours, I noticed my supply was going down a little bit, so I added pumping at night. So I would get up probably two times a night and pump for 20 minutes. And I did that every four hours. So by my last time pumping was at nine, then I'd wake up, you know, four hours from there, and then again at like six or seven and pump. And that helped. Um, in order, the way to increase your milk supply is to, um, is to pump more often because um, every time you empty your breast, your body needs to refill it. So it thinks the baby's drinking more milk. It needs to produce more. So, so that's what I did. I just added, I just added more times. I just added more times to pump. And then by six months, Mason was drinking more milk. So he was drinking four ounces every three to four hours. Yeah. So by then, um, we started traveling more, going to New Mexico. And um, when you travel, I would take the breast pump with me, but I wouldn't pump as often because we were, it's, I was really busy visiting with family. I would still try to make time to pump, but I wasn't consistent. I wasn't doing it every three hours or every four hours. I was going longer periods without doing it. So my body was thinking Mason was drinking less. So every time we would go on vacation, I'd notice that my milk supply would go down. And that's, why I like that's why I started pumping at night because I didn't want to lose my supply I wanted to keep feeding him the breast milk and with that being said I was going through my uh, freezer stash really fast because I wasn't producing as much milk during the day I would um, defrost more and more milk and I wasn't replenishing it so of course that's a little that's a little bit scary and that also motivated me to get up in the middle of the night to, to pump. And then to fast forward to nine months, um, I've, I've changed my, I've changed it just a little bit. I'm now pumping 15 minutes every probably two and a half, two to two and a half hours, just because like I said before, I needed, I need to increase my supply because this last time that we went to New Mexico when he would wake up in the morning and he would start to move around and start to make noise instead of me getting up and bringing him into bed with me to feed my mom would come in the room get him take him in the kitchen feed him breakfast and I would sleep longer so I missed out on that morning feed and then also missed out on pumping because I was lazy and I would go back to bed so um so now that he's drinking more milk, now he's up to six ounces every like five to six hours, anywhere between four to six hours, just depending, just depending on him. And I'm barely producing that. I feel like I really, really lost my supply. So I'm down to like the last few um, ounces of frozen milk in the freezer. So I've been really persistent with pumping. Like I said, I'm doing the 15 minutes every two to two and a half hours, and then I'm getting up two times a night and pumping for 20 minutes, hoping this will increase the supply. And I've been doing this for, I mean, he's 10 months now. I've been doing this for nine months now. So I know my body. I know how to trick it into thinking Mason's drinking more milk. Um, in or so that way I can increase my supply to keep feeding him. I have tried getting Mason formula, which I'm not a fan of, and and he's not really a fan of it either. So I've gone 10 months of of this pumping, and I only have two more months to go. So I am making the commitment to keep doing this. I know a lot of people would think it's ridiculous to keep yourself hooked up to a machine when it's easier just to you know have the baby breastfeed from you but 
I don't know about you, but I found it very difficult. It's a lot and it's hard on your body and you do need a break and you want to share, you know, the time of feeding him with somebody else. I want my husband to be able to feed him. I want my family to be able to feed him because I do think it's a bonding experience. And pumping is the way to give your family members that opportunity. And it's just, it's what worked for me. I had the time to do it. I made the time to do it. It is a commitment and it is hard work. Sometimes when my alarm goes off in the middle of the night and it's like midnight or one o'clock, I think to myself, it would be so much easier just to give him formula. But in the end, it's what I want it to do. It's, it works for me, it works for Mason, it works for my family. Will I do this for the next child? Probably not. Um, I think the next time around, I still, I will still use my breast pack, but I definitely want to breastfeed. I want to make that the priority. I want, I don't, I, I don't know why. I just, I feel like I won't have to worry as much about my supply decreasing, you know, because I do go home, I do go to New Mexico a lot, and when I'm there, I... I'm not consistent with pumping, and I think if I am breastfeeding, I'm gonna have to feed my baby no matter what. So with that, I won't have to worry about having to do all this, I won't have to do all this makeup time of pumping in order to get my supply back up. So that's one thing I will change on the next baby. I will make more of an effort in physically breastfeeding instead of pumping. So that is pretty much how I breastfeed. I wouldn't say this is for everyone because it is difficult, it is time consuming, it is weird to be connected to a machine. Hopefully anybody else who is in the same boat as I, as I am and wants to breastfeed your baby but is finding it difficult, I hope this helps you out. I hope it, you know, motivates you to find a way that'll work for you. Maybe you breastfeed and pump, or you only pump and feed your baby express milk. Hopefully it helps you out, because um, this is just, it's what works for me. So if you haven't noticed, I did dye my hair. Um, thumbs up if you like it. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.